Have you seen this new feature in Adobe Illustrator that allows you to make crazy 3D shapes without having to know how to actually make 3D things? It's pretty rad and a lot of fun to play with. That said, it can be annoying to work in Adobe Illustrator. It's certainly not that intuitive to draw in Adobe Illustrator. But guess what? We can do our vector drawing in Adobe Fresco on our iPad and then open it up in Illustrator and take advantage of all this 3D stuff all the cool kids are playing with. All right, I'll see you at the iPad. Okay, so I have this sketch here, which is just a lettering tree treatment of my name and this is what I'm going to use to make some 3D type in Illustrator. So what we need to do is just redraw this in vector. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down the opacity of my sketch layer a little bit and then I'm going to make a new layer and then I'm just going to grab a vector brush. So the vector brushes are the third ones down and I like to just use the basic round brush. And then I put the smoothing all the way up so that I can get nice smooth curves because that's what I want for this. If you don't want smooth curves, you can keep your smoothing down low. There's nothing really different about drawing with the vector brushes. You just uh, draw with them. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna trace over to this sketch and just, you know, clean it up and tighten it up a little bit as I go. One cool thing about using the vector brushes is that we can use the vector trimming tool which allows us to just double tap on our modifier and then just X out the things that we don't want anymore. And that tool is super helpful. So we'll do it again here. I'm gonna start this line above the R, come down and draw this, and then double tap, and then just draw right through what we don't want. It makes it a lot easier to get like a nice smooth curve because you're not trying to like start in one little spot. You can just go all the way through and that tends to give you better results. So for example here, instead of trying to like start and go immediately into this curve, you can get a little bit of a running start here. It makes it a little bit easier. And then here, you can go like that. And then we can just go to this modifier and then just draw right through what we don't want. It's a, a lovely, lovely feature. If I was smart, I would turn down the pressure sensitivity since I want these all to be the same width, but I don't know. Maybe I want there to be a tiny bit of variety so it's clear that it's hand-drawn. Or I'm lazy. There's a uh, no telling which it is. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm lazy or smart. <laughs> but I'm going to draw right through here and then use the vector trimming tool again. Alright. Now I just want to make like a a border around the outside. So I'm going to make a new layer to do this and then just choose this color. So for this, I'm just going to make a border around the outside, just sort of following along the shapes. Just making a little house for this lettering to live in. Not following it exactly, but just trying to make like a nice, nice overall shape. ahead and fill that in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and pick some colors. I think I wanna use a, a little bit of an off-white or something for my name, like this. Maybe like a teal color for the shape. Now all I'm gonna do is click on this top button where you would go to save your file. But instead of doing that, I'm gonna do open a copy and I'm gonna choose Illustrator on the desktop. 
and this is gonna pop up over on my computer in Illustrator and that's where we will do the rest of this. So let me send that off and I will meet you at my computer. Okay, so I'm at my computer in Adobe Illustrator and I have my lettering treatment pulled up here. The first thing I'm gonna do is just clean this up a little bit. So I did the main lettering on one layer and then I have the fill on another layer. So I'm just gonna turn off the lettering layer and then do Command A to select everything. And you'll see here there's some extra shapes based on how I drew it in a couple different ways that didn't get merged together. So I'm gonna go into Pathfinder and use this first option that's gonna combine it all into one shape. If you don't have Pathfinder open, you can just go and get that in Windows and then go to Pathfinder. But the first one, you can see the icons sort of show what they do. The first one is just making it all into one shape. So now when we look at this, you'll see that it's all one shape. Now because this 3D stuff can be pretty processor intensive, what I like to do is just sort of simplify my illustration a little bit. So I'm gonna select this shape and then go up to Object, Path, and then choose Simplify. And there's this first, this little auto option that is usually just automatically selected. And usually you can just go with that and this just automatically analyzes it and gets rid of extra points. So that's probably good enough. You could kind of pull this slider and fine tune it if you want and bring more stuff down and see how that looks. I actually think it looks better on this one when I pull it down a little bit in some spots because it kind of cleans up some of my rough lines. So I'm going to go with that. Now we can go back to our lettering layer and then I'm going to turn off the order shape for a second and then go ahead and do command A to select all of this lettering. And it looks like it's already all combined nicely. So that is good. Then we can go into the path simplify option that we did for the other one. So we'll go into here, simplify. And I think that looks pretty good. So we can close off of that. The only thing that I noticed that was a little weird was this little cutout where the C loops in on itself. And then down here, there's a little bit of a hard edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the direct select tool, which is the white arrow, and then click on the point where it's a little bit of an issue. And I'm gonna just pull these handles to just smooth out this curve a little bit. We go like that, clean that up a little bit. And then this one, just gonna pull these handles until that line is a little bit more straight. And then I don't mind if it's like a little lumpy because it is hand-drawn and that's okay. I just don't want there to be any like weird harsh edges. I want it all to be sort of fluid. And then this one down here, all we really need to do is just kind of tweak the length of these um, little handles to just smooth out that curve. So that looks good to me. A quick way to look for spots I find helpful is um, using the preview mode and that just shows you the overall shape. So to get into preview mode, you can do Command Y and this just shows literally the shapes without any fill color or anything like that. And this is helpful to just see all the edges of your shapes and see if there's any areas that you want to fix. It's also helpful if you have any like weird stray points that you want to get rid of. You can preview them easily like this. So this looks good to me. Hit Command Y to go back. And then I'm going to turn on my shape color below. And I think this is all good. Actually, I lied. There's some spots I want to clean up in this border shape. But also, now that I have this contrast, I'm seeing this couple spots on the C that I'm not crazy about. So I'm going to try to smooth these out real quick. 
before I was an illustrator, I used to be a graphic designer and I did lots of logos and branding stuff. So I used to spend a lot of time working with the pen tool. So if you are not familiar with points and all this stuff in Illustrator, it may get a little bit frustrating because it can be can be tricky, especially the longer the points are, the more, um, I don't know, uh, complicated, like the more amount of movement can happen. Like if it's really long, you move it a tiny bit and it'll change things dramatically. So it can be, uh, can be a bit, a bit of a headache if you're not used to it, but just take your time, you'll be okay. Okay, and then there was something else I wanted to fix. Oh yeah. This side over here, there's like a little dent. That. So you can, when points have these handles, you can grab the point itself and move that. And then you can also grab the handles which control the angles and curves that are coming off of them. And then right up here, oh, look at that. We got something there. <laughs> so, you know, you could leave this stuff. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to fix it, but I'm going to <laughs> because I don't know. So I'm moving this up a little bit so that I can pull that angle more so that it just kind of smooths it out. One other thing that you can do if you didn't already make this shape around your your lettering is you make an offset path. And I wanted to sort of customize my shape a little bit and change some some of the ways it connects. But you can get pretty close results without the extra work by just selecting your lettering work like this. And then you can, um, I think an easy thing to do is to copy it first and then go to object path, offset path. And then you can come in here and type in how big you want it to be. And then you could choose some different options like the bevel or I want round to get that smooth edge. And this is looking pretty good. Let's see if it's a little bit bigger. Okay. This might actually be better than what I had drawn. We'll give it a shot. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll just select all of this and then Pathfinder it all together and then get rid of these weird little spots where there was like gaps between the letters. So to do that, all you have to do is grab the direct select tool and then just click on any one of the points in that shape and then you can just hit delete until it's gone. A quick way to do this is uh, to do command Y to go into preview mode and then you can actually just click and drag inside and get rid of a bunch of them at once. Now we can go to edit paste in place and that'll put our lettering back and then we can select the color that we were going to use and now we can decide which one looks better. I think I prefer the one I drew a little bit better, so we're gonna go with that. So what I'm gonna do now is select everything. Again, you could do Command A, and I'm gonna do Command G to make it into a group. So now's the fun part where we do some 3D magic. So I'm gonna go to Window, and then 3D and Materials. And you'll see this little dialog box pop up and make sure that my lettering treatment is selected and I'm going to choose the inflate option. And this stuff can be a little taxing on your computer. It might go a little bit slow depending on the complexity and you know how new or not new your machine may be. So these are the default settings and then you can go in here and sort of like adjust the depth you can use this little thing to like move it around and preview it, see what it looks like. You can rotate it in like 3D space. This shows you the thickness. So if you wanted to like bring that down like that, I think this angle is kind of cool because it shows some of the side. You can also inflate like both sides and that gives it a sort of different look. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell from this side, but if we rotate it, you can see that it's 
sort of uh, mirroring the 3Dness on both sides. And now what we can do is, actually I actually think I want to turn it a little bit so that the letters aren't getting too cut off because they're a little thin. So what we can do now is adjust the lighting because I feel like the, the lighting on this isn't great. So you can choose some of these default options or you can manually move the light source around to get the result that you want. So I think that looks pretty cool. One thing that I think is a nice addition is to add an additional light source. So if you click on this little plus button on the bottom of your lights, you'll see a new one is added. I like to drag this one low and then bring down the intensity of it and also change it to like a different color. I th sometimes doing like a, uh, a light purple is a nice touch. So we can bring the intensity down even more. We could try moving it somewhere else like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And then you can adjust these different things. Like you can do the, the softness of the light and that will make the shadows less harsh. That was on light too, but it would be more noticeable on the other light, which is a, a brighter light. I think I'll keep that right around the middle. And then there's the ambient light, which is just like the overall lighting of the room. So if you turn that off, you'll see get, the shadows get really harsh because it's just using the light sources that you've made as opposed to having it be, you can think of it like if this was in a room and all of the lights were off, you're in a dark room and you just had one light shining on something, the shadows would be a lot more dramatic. Or if you were in a room that had decent lighting, but there was also light shined onto something. So now we can go into materials here and there's this like roughness option. I don't know if roughness is the right term because it's the way I think about it. Like if you bring the roughness all the way down, it makes it like super glossy and shiny and rough brings it up, sort of makes it seem like a softer material. I don't know. It's not like it makes it rough, like a rough texture. I feel like it makes it just look soft and soft. <laughs> I think I want to bring the roughness all the way down and have it be like shiny and plasticky. So I think that's kind of fun. You can also play around with like different materials too. Like if you want it to be gold leaf, you can like do something like that. You can get pretty wild with these uh, different textures and materials. So I'm gonna go back to my default color. So this is looking pretty good, but this is just a low res preview. So to make this look really fancy, we're gonna go up to this top menu in the top right corner. And there's a thing called a ray tracing. Now this is when your computer can start getting a little stressed out, a little overwhelmed. So just give it some time, give it a little space to just breathe and it'll be okay. It just may take a couple minutes. I'm gonna turn on ray tracing. And what this is gonna do is just sort of make it super hyper real. And then I'm gonna bring this up to high quality and then I'm gonna hit render. And then I'm gonna just wait a minute. Are you excited? I'm excited. Told you it's gonna take a minute. May not take this long because I forgot to quit like other apps that I'm running. My computer has Final Cut Pro open and Photoshop open, which is not ideal when you're trying to do this kind of thing. Look at that. Illustrator does all the hard work for you. If you make something fun with this and post it on social media, definitely tag me at Chris Piasek because I would love to check it out. And hey, while you're here, check out this other video about making vector graphics in Adobe Fresco. That way you can make all the things and make them all crazy 3D like this. I know that's what I've been doing. Oh wait, one more thing. Did you know I'm doing live streams every Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern? You should come hang out. Okay. Good talk.